Okay, so today we're going to do a calibration on this Vizio 4K TV. Uh, this is a Vizio M43C1. And uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what year it, uh, it was uh, put out, but um, yeah, shouldn't be too long ago, probably in the past few years. And uh, yeah, we're going to do it on the Wii today because um, this, if you saw in the other videos, the um, I did it with the Dreamcast over here, uh, but yeah, we're gonna do it on the Wii because this TV doesn't have the uh, S-Video, um, but it does have, uh, the, uh, Y, um, uh, y, uh, YB, YR, uh, signal, um, yeah, component, <laughs> basically, uh, so yeah, we're gonna, and I, yeah, and so I have some component cables here hooked up to the Wii. Uh, this is, um, this is a monster cable. So yeah, I bought it back when the Wii was still being sold. And this was uh, more expensive than the official component cables, but it's also a uh, higher quality. Um, yeah, and then I have it going into this switcher. And then I have monster cables for audio and for video coming out of here. Um, then coming over here, going into the back of this TV. Yeah, there's those monster cables and all of their analog glory. Yeah, monster cables are really high quality. Um, just to give you, just to show you real quick, I'll just unplug this for a second here. So I don't know if you can see in there, but you can see that there's pins for every, um, uh, for for all the different signals in here, uh, so a lot of other cables, they only have pins for the um, signals that they use. So like if they have, so like if they're S video signals, they'll have, you know, like the two pins for that, and then for sound. But then the other pins are just left open. Um, the monster cables I've noticed have pins for everything. And I think it's because they just um, they cancel out the the signals that they aren't using. So. And yeah, they, yeah, I've never had any problems with these monster cables. Besides that, some of the ones that you plug into your TV are kind of a tight fit, but that's a topic for another day on how to fix that. Um, anyway, let's, uh, yeah, so this is a modded Wii. Um, you need one of, you need a modded Wii to do the, uh, the, what do you call it? Um, the 240B test suite and but first before we go in I'm actually going to go in here and uh, change some video settings Oh, and I'm going to turn on this small TV. So I have this uh, so I have it hooked up to this switcher um, And then this small TV is also hooked up with the monster cable, but uh, I just have the uh, the Luma signal coming into this TV on the composite Luma in component video is, uh, it stands for luminance and it's just basically a black and white signal. Um, so yeah, a, a TV that just has composite, if you plug in the, the Y or the green cable, um, it will show up as just black and white because that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, and it's the same uh, Luma signal that's in S video. Um, yeah, component, the way component works is so, uh, so this carries the black and white Luma signal, and then these two would carry the, um, the red and the green signal, um, or sorry, the, or no, no, sorry, it carries all the color signal, and then they're able to, they, they do some algorithms to then, uh, uh, get the, um, to get the three red, you know, red, green, and blue signals from there, um, but yeah. Uh, this TV doesn't have component video, so we're just using the black and white, um, yeah, black and white Luma signal. Uh, so yeah, let's go into, uh, let's see, let's go into screen and change some of these. So first off, I'm going to put it in uh, 480p, since we are using component, might as well have the highest connections, and I can see at the top there it says 480p, um, although the... Oh yeah, now now that it's in progressive, now it shows up weird on the CRT, um, but that's okay because the the 240p test suite actually doesn't um, do 
for ADP by fear we put it in there just so we have the highest setting. And then also we're going to set this on widescreen. Although again, well, you'll see that it actually doesn't do widescreen either, but that's okay. Now, now we have it set up for a 4K TV, so yeah. Just leave it like that for now. Okay, and actually, hold on, let me adjust this white balance. So this actually looks white instead of blue. There we go. Okay. Have it on 64,000. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's pretty easy to get this on your Wii. You just have to um, basically uh, put the 240p file inside your applications folder. Um, yeah, pretty easy to do. Okay, and then um, actually I'm going to use a GameCube controller here because, uh, yeah, GameCube controller works on this uh, homebrew stuff. Who doesn't like them a good GameCube controller, right? <laughs> All right, so yeah, let's go into the 240p test suite. Load. Okay. Yeah, so you can see over here. Um, yeah, it looks as expected. It's not going to work over here, probably. Yep, no signal because it's a 240p uh, signal, obviously, since it's yeah 240p test suite, but. Uh, you can see on here, it says these settings will be ignored, 60 by 9 aspect ratio, yeah. Uh, I remember when Nintendo uh, originally announced the Wii, they um, urged developers to put their games in 60 by 9 widescreen as well to develop that. Uh, but apparently they didn't tell the homebrew community that, <laughs> which is fine, we don't really need it for this um test but yeah so uh anyway to get this to show up um correctly what we're gonna have to do is go down to uh video settings down here at uh, video and we're gonna put it on 480i scaled 240p assets and then that should yeah so now it's doing 480i and yeah it shows up here it shows up here um yeah, and actually, so looking at this, so this is something I don't think the Dreamcast had. I don't know, maybe I just didn't see it because I didn't was wasn't using the VGA cable. But it has a 480p scaled 240p assets and scan lines. Let's see what that. Okay, so see, so now that's 480p because I'm using the component cable and I set that setting before. Um, yeah, so this is actually pretty cool. So this is basically emulating the 240p signal and it adds the scan lines on there. Um, I'm a little torn as to whether I should use this or whether I should use this one. Um, I think I'm going to I'm going to use this one just because uh, usually when you plug in a TV or when you plug in a system to your TV, it's not going to be emulating 240p with the scan lines and everything. It's just going to be uh, 480i and then just everything blocky pixelated uh, so yeah I think I'm just gonna leave it like this plus then it shows up on here so yeah okay and then the next uh, thing we're gonna uh, change is I'm gonna change the aspect ratio so um, yeah hold on I'm gonna pause the video while I do that okay here we have the setting here so we're gonna go into wide Oh, come on. Okay. There we go. All right, and then let's go down to... Oh, my goodness. Ah, this jumbo remote. It's it's hard to do it with one-handed, too. All right, let's go into menu again. Let's go into set system. Okay, wide. All right. <clears throat> come on. Okay, here we go. All right, yeah, so now we'll just put on normal, and then, yeah, it looks pretty good. Pan pan panoramic is actually what you want to do for widescreen. Um, I think there was another one that said, like, widescreen or something like that. But, yeah, that one actually crops off the side, so you don't want to do that one. Okay, but now we're at the right aspect ratio, so it looks the same here, it looks the same here. I mean, for aspect, anyway. Okay, and then uh, another thing, too, is, so I'm, so as I said, you know, I'm using a component, but... Uh, if you're using composite, which I think probably a lot of people will, um, 
let's see, you actually want to go into here and I would turn on this uh, composite filter and I'm actually going to hook up my composite cables real quick just to show you what it looks like. Hold on. Okay, so I just unplugged the component cables and plugged in composite. You can tell right off the bat, it looks a lot, <laughs> a lot blurrier. Uh, yeah, holy cow, component looks way better on this TV than composite. It's like, it's not even funny. So yeah, if you can do this in composite, then I would. Let me just make sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's just the way composite is, I guess. But anyway, this is a cool... So this is really cool. So see, this is what it looks like without the filter. And when you turn it on, everything just looks so much better. Like now, it actually looks just about as good as component. There's still, there's still a little um, composite, like you can see on here kind of funny on the deep flickering you can see it flickering a little bit um but yeah if you're going to do this these tests with the composite cable you know just like the regular cable that comes with your wii definitely turn on this filter because it's going to make stuff look so much better um yes please turn on this filter if you're going to use composite and then um yeah deep flicker i would leave this off for a digital tv this is this was something more for uh, some people preferred this on for like CRTs, but yeah, I'd leave that off for digital TV to make it look, uh, yeah, more um, crisp. Uh, PAL, we don't care about, well, we, it's not we don't care about PAL, but these are just not, uh, yeah, I'm not, I don't have PAL TVs, so. Uh, yeah, yes, okay, I, yeah, looking at these other things, this is the one you want to turn on for uh, uh, component, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, we'll uh, turn that off and then we'll go back to, um, uh, or sorry, that's what you want to have turned on for composite, but I'm going to turn it off and now I'm going to switch back over to uh, component. Okay, and then, uh, um, yeah, I just thought uh, I hooked these uh, the composite cable up to the CRT real quick. I was just curious to see what this, uh, yeah, so here's where it's off, here's with it on. Yeah. Yeah, it looks a little bit better with it on on the CRT, but it's not as drastic of a change as it was on the 4K TV. So, yeah. All right. So now let's go, let's start with our test patterns here. Okay, cool. So first let's do the pluge or however you pronounce it. Yeah, so... Um, Let's see, so this is, yeah, so it stands for picture, lineup, generation, equipment, uh, yeah. Oh, you know what, before I do this, I forgot to change one more setting on here. Uh, so right now it's in standard uh, for the picture mode. I'm actually going to put it in game mode because, um, standard adds a lot of extra digital processing. I mean, there's always going to be some digital processing because it's the digital TV, obviously. Uh, but yeah, standard just adds extra features as well as the other, so like calibrated. Wow, that looks interesting. I wonder how calibrated uh, uh, fares against what we're going to do. Calibrated dark. That's probably the one I would use mostly. Yeah, vivid. That looks kind of cool. Very bright, I guess. Um, but yeah, we're going to put on game mode here because they turn off a lot of extra digital processing. Um, so yeah, it, the response time is a lot quicker, and I've tested that before just on my own. Yeah, it makes a big difference. So yeah, anyway, um, so let's go back. So what we're going to do on this, uh, I can't remember if I, I guess I did already show this, but yeah. Uh, so what we're going to do on this is we're going to adjust the brightness. Uh, so then we should see, um, we should barely see the the black or the gray bars on the side of the screen. Um, so yeah, so right now you can see them. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, they're, I think they're, they're too light right now. So let's see here. Let's go into, let's click on menu here. I'm going to. Yeah, let's see here. There we go. All right, and then let's go into picture, and then we're gonna go down to uh, brightness. Okay. All right, so we're gonna lower this until we can't see those bars anymore. Okay, I can't see them anymore. 
And now we're going to raise it. I hope you can see. Maybe you can't see what I'm seeing because the lights are on. Let me turn off the lights. Hold on. Well, uh, the lights are off. <laughs> so yeah, I think you can see it now. You can see there's a bar right there. Uh, and then there's also two other ones, which I can't really see right now because I lowered the brightness. You can actually see them better on this CRT. Yeah, you can see the three bars. This CRT is probably too bright. Probably needs to be calibrated as well, but maybe I'll do that another day. Or Actually, this is uh, this is actually for a friend uh, named Leon. And so, yeah, if he ever decides that he wants to take this TV to his house, then maybe I'll calibrate it for him if he wants me to. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's see here. Okay, so, yeah, just kind of messing around with this a little bit. So there, right about there is where I can start to see those black bars besides the, this one. Um, did it, let's see, let's just check. Did it say that it's supposed to be, I don't know if we're looking for the, the black bars in the middle. Okay, until the desired bars are no longer visible and then slowly raise it till they're just visible yeah so it just says all of them so oh and by the way this is uh as you can see here oh where is it i thought it said on here maybe it was just on the dreamcast version i don't know i'm not going to read the whole thing but anyway this this test for or uh, this calibration is different on a led compared to a crt if you saw my other videos on a CRT, what you actually want to do is you want to raise the contrast all the way um, until you can't see any of the uh, black lines in between the scan lines up here. Um, and then you lower the contrast until the scan lines are the same size as they are on these other um, uh, rectangles. So, but yeah, we're not on a CRT, so we don't have scan lines. Okay. So, yeah, I, I guess I'll raise the brightness of... Oh, Okay, that's cool. So you can actually, okay. You can change what you're, okay, yeah, you can change the setting you're working with. Okay, so yeah, so I think right about there, so about 46 is where I can barely see. And actually, um, I can barely see the lines now. And, and yeah, so let's go back, because actually on here we have another test. Um, so this one's for testing colors, but then, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, okay, so, um, yeah, this gray underneath one should barely be visible. And, like, I can see clear over to zero, even. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so apparently there's some uh, differences between this test and the previous one. Um, boy, yeah, that's a that's a big difference. So um, I'm going to go off of this test just because uh, since the other test, uh, you calibrate the, the white levels differently with the contrast. Um, this one, you actually do, like, this is something you can check on a CRT as well. And I did check that for um, the other videos I did. And I'm going to be comparing this TV compared to these ones and possibly this one as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go off of this test. So actually, I'm going to lower the brightness. Did I show the help on this screen, by the way? Yeah, you can look at that. Um, oh, and actually it says, let me get this thing out of the way. So it says actually, uh, uh, it says actually it says adjust the white level first. This is done using the contrast control in your TV set. Yeah, okay, yeah, so we can do that first, I guess. Um, Okay, yeah, so so basically for this, uh, yeah, so before we do the brightness, um, let's actually go over here and do the contrast. So, um, well, actually, I'm going to do the brightness first just because that was from the other test. So let me open that up again. Hold on. Okay, here we go. So, yeah, so I'm going to lower this. So where were we at, like 44 or something like that? So under this this one column should barely be visible. All right, I just did a lot because it was taking a while. Okay, so now I can't see it at all. So I'm gonna now I'm gonna raise it until it's barely visible. Again, we're looking for um, right here. Oh, okay. 
Okay, let's see here. All right, so 20, I can't really see it. 21, I can see it. Okay. Yeah, I'd say about 21. Okay. So yeah, so about, yeah, so that's quite a bit lower. <laughs> quite a bit lower than it was before. Um, yeah, so now we'll do the contrast. Um, so let's go. Yeah, so with oh, my video stopped there, but uh, yeah, this is kind of interesting because uh, contrast is um, like it's it, it, so on these uh, CRT tube TVs, uh, it if you have it raised all the way, it will actually um, it. Well, I've read it can uh, decrease the life of your tube. Um, yeah, I doubt it decreases the life of your LED TV. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe the LEDs wear out faster. <laughs> but anyway, contrast is a setting where the higher you raise the contrast, uh, the more you'll see, like, there'll be a more dynamic difference between, like, black and white. Um, but then the downside to raising that contrast is that then in the black scenes, uh, you'll you won't be able to see a lot of details. They'll, they I think they call it crushing the blacks. Um, so yeah, you don't want to have the contrast raised too much. So yeah, I don't know. Fifty actually might be an okay setting for this, but let's go ahead and raise it just for just for um, yeah t science <laughs> I guess. So yeah, so as we saw before, so you're supposed to raise it until the the E and the F. Um, isn't visible anymore and actually I think on the previous where it said to do the contrast first I think it was saying to adjust contrast before you adjust the color so yeah I think we're okay to do the, the brightness before okay so now I can't see a difference between these two anymore so now I'm gonna lower it until I can Yeah, so see, so right about there at 61 is where I'm starting to see a difference. But yeah, I mean, the more you lower it, the more detail you have. Let's see if you lower it all the way. Yeah, I mean, if you lower it too much, though, then the screen gets too dark, and it's, uh, yeah, you actually lose some dark detail over here. So it, it definitely is a balance. Yeah, this is pretty similar to a CRT, actually. Yeah, I actually, I think I'm just going to leave it at 50 like there was originally because, yeah, even though I could start to see the difference on like 61 or whatever, um, I, I like it better like this. I like a little bit, I like seeing more details in the shadow. I don't like uh, playing games and then not being able to see the details. <laughs> it's really annoying. Yeah, that's actually a problem on this Trinitron that I'll get into on the next video I make. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it like this. So yeah, 50 is good. Yeah, we can see the difference between this two. And then the, okay, now the other thing, okay, now the other test on here is for these colors. Um, we shouldn't be able to see a difference between the E and the F columns. Uh, so yeah, don't see a difference there, don't see a difference there, don't see a difference there. Looks pretty good. So I'm not, and then I don't have equipment to actually calibrate the colors. Um, yeah, you need special equipment for that, and I don't have it. But <laughs> anecdotally, this looks red, this looks green, this looks blue, this looks white. <laughs> I'm not going to go in and change the tint and mess stuff up. But if you want to, or if your TV doesn't look red, doesn't look green, doesn't look blue, then you can definitely go in and change the tint. And yeah, a lot of this stuff should be the same on other brands of TVs as well. But um, yeah, let's go on to the next test here. Yeah, and actually, uh, let's see here, I think, oh yeah, okay, yeah, so this is kind of a cool one. So this is like the the classic NTSC, uh, um, like color, what do they call it, sample color bars, <laughs> or SMPTE color bars. Um, yeah, this is like the screen that you would see, you can look at the different things on here, but um. Yeah, this is the this is the screen that you would see on uh, like a lot of times when broadcasting wasn't working, like for television. Then uh, 
yeah, it would just show the screen. And it's just like for calibrating colors again. Uh, what I really like about this this down here is you can you can see uh, you can see how your black levels are. So they look pretty good. Like I don't know if this is coming up on the camera, but you can see gray right here. But then the other ones are are pretty much just absorbed into the black. So that's good. Whereas over here, since the brightness is too high, you can clearly see all of your yeah blacks in there. And then actually uh, on this test, you can push the A button, I think. Yeah, the A button, um, it will change it to, oh, I thought that that was, let's see, hold on. Yeah, it's a little different on the Dreamcast, I think. Um, let's see what it says in the help here. Yeah, the 7.5 IRE. Um, yeah, but let's see here. Yeah, I seem to remember on the Dreamcast it would actually say the NTSC mode. But anyway, we want to keep it on uh, just the original full RGB mode because that's what games use internally. Um, yeah, even though obviously they do... Oh yeah, there we go, yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, you want to just keep it on what it, what it comes in as originally because... Um, yeah, the full RGB is what games use internally. Uh, and then, yeah, these systems uh, a lot of times do output at um, a limited range RGB because that's what TVs are designed to take. Um, that, that's a whole history lesson in and of itself. But yeah, anyway, I'm not going to mess with, the, with that. And actually, you can change this one too. So you can see, okay, this is the one I remember it saying it. So yeah, you put on here, it just raises all the, the, the white levels too much. And so yeah, I can throw off your calibration. Let's see. Oh, this is cool. So on this test, yeah, you can actually add a, um, the grid in the background. That's cool. <laughs> anyway, let's go on to uh, the next test. So, all right. So this is one where you can also uh, calibrate the colors if you want to. Um, Let's see here. I'm actually going to turn on the lights. Well, I'll just leave them off, I guess. Let's see. Well, I'll turn them on. Okay. There we go. Now we're not in the dark anymore. Since we already did the the brightness calibration, I think this is good. Uh, but yeah, so this one, yeah, it's again just for color test or uh, calibrating the colors. Um, yeah, you can see on here. Yeah, it's also good when you have a white screen like this. Uh, this is where, well, actually, I don't know if this is... Uh, all the way white yeah grayscale so yeah um yeah so anyway uh but when you do uh well i'll go into that when we get to the white screen but yeah oh and actually you know what while we're here i just thought of something i forgot uh, let's see let's go back up to this one so where we uh where we lowered the um the brightness level uh the brightness level is actually different from what i can tell from well, I mean, obviously it's different, but so the backlight, you can actually raise the backlight without affecting your brightness, uh, your brightness settings. So yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention that before, but I, I'm actually going to raise it a little bit because I kind of like having a, a slightly brighter image. So you can see like I'm raising the bright, I'm raising, I'm raising the backlight. Uh, but you can see the brightness level isn't suffering from it. So we still, it's kind of like a, a digital TV hack. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's not really, but it's, it's a trick that I like to do. Um, but yeah, so you can see we, uh, yeah, we raised the bright, the backlight. Um, but then we're, but the, the brightness level for the dark, um, scenes haven't, hasn't suffered at all. So yeah, um, I think I'm going to leave it at 50 because, yeah, just having a little bit brighter screen makes it look better when the lights are on. I think on game mode they turn it down just because, uh, you know, you're going to be looking at the screen a lot. And there's going to be, like, static, you know, non-moving content on the screen. So, I don't know. These LEDs don't really, it's, they don't really suffer from burning too much, like OLEDs. But, yeah, anyway, the way that, the, I don't know, just in case you didn't know, a side note, the way these LED uh, displays work is, so they have pixels, like like actual pixels um, that are inside of the screen. 
uh, and then behind that they have a backlight which then you know just like shoots white light through the pixels and illuminates what needs to be illuminated um, which is kind of good I mean it's it, it is a good technology but it's also has its downside since you never get 100% black like over here you can tell the screen is on and like the back the black levels they probably I'm going to test them more once I do the, the next video but they probably don't look as good as they do on the CRTs um, but yeah and and obviously they don't look as good as like an OLED TV either uh, and then also um, you can actually get like some light bleeding on some areas. I haven't, I'll have to see if we notice it on, there's another test for that. But um, yeah, anyway, turning up the backlight just turns up the light that's behind the pixels. And so it's not really, that's why it doesn't mess around with the uh, brightness level. Because that's like the actual brightness level of the pixels, not the backlight. It's two different settings, basically. But yeah, you can turn up the backlight without affecting your brightness level. <sighs> okay, hope that made sense. Anyway, let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, let's see which one we do. Okay, yeah, let's go back and do this test. Okay. All right, yeah, so this... Okay, so this is a pretty cool test. I think it's maybe more relevant on CRTs, but I don't know. Let me get rid of this... Uh, backlight on here let's see here there we go okay yeah we can go into the help but basically you want to be able to see clear distinctions in between all the lines of color um yeah let's see the help there anyway hey, let's take a look at this yep like you can see that there's clear black lines in between um everything all the different colors uh, I'd say the blue is maybe a little bit more, um, like it's it's a little harder to tell the difference between blue and black, maybe it's because blue is a darker color. Um, so yeah, the contrast is a little bit, maybe if we raise the contrast, um, that would change that. I don't know, not sure about that. But yeah, it looks pretty good though. I'm not going to, uh, yeah, I think that everything, in fact, is there even anything... Unneeded color upsampling. Yeah. It, it looks pretty good, I'd say. And then if you push the A button, yeah, you can change it to so it's little um, squares. And then there's black. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say all the colors look pretty good. Uh, blue, except blue's, blue's acceptable. Um, Anyway, I think this is more of if you're designing an upscaler. So, yeah, that yeah, we're obviously not designing the upscaler for this TV. It already has one built in. Yeah, like right now, it's it's upscaling the four. It's deinterlacing the 480i signal, and then it's upscaling it to 4K. So, yeah, that's not something we're designing. But okay, this is a cool test. Um. Yeah, so this one is, uh, this is the overscan, so for uh, a lot of older games, um, content won't be drawn out here in this uh, red box. Uh, either that or it's just like garbage stuff because the developers didn't intend for it to show up on a CRT display necessarily. Um, but yeah, this just kind of shows that, and then we can look at the help here. Um, yeah. Whoops. Uh, but yeah, another, another uh, reason I really like this test, though, is because you can you can see the straight line, like the geometry for the straight lines. And obviously, since this is a digital TV, it's going to be <laughs> just perfect. <laughs> um, yeah. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, now something I'm noticing on here is that... Hold on, let me turn on this Trinitron, because this is kind of interesting now. I'm going to turn on the Mitsubishi as well, really quick. Because, um, yeah, because what I remember from this test before is uh, on those other TVs, you could see a black line in between here. Yeah. Of course, this isn't going to be a... Well, yeah, this is now 480i, so maybe this isn't a fair signal. And actually, I don't see that black line on here anymore, so I don't know. Maybe it's only on 240p. Let's try changing that real quick. 
I'm just curious. Okay. Yeah, so you can, oh, duh, <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it, it's because there's, uh, it's it's drawing the black line between the scan lines on here, so. Yeah, that's the, yeah, <laughs> okay. That was funny, yeah, that's the black line, remember, is the black line between the scan line on the four, on the 240p. Whoops. Uh, oh, hold on. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, got it. All right. But yeah, uh, yeah, the lines do look uh, really straight on here. Uh, yeah, since, yeah, obviously since it's a digital uh, TV. Um, yeah, and then they also look really good on this curved screen. Um, and then if you saw my other video, you can see on here, Yeah, you can see on here, this is, yeah, the lines, they look pretty good, but like, they they are a little curved on this uh, Sony Trinitron since it was, um, yeah, uh, flat screen. They put flat grass on, glass on top of the curved tube. Because over here on the Mitsubishi, it looks pretty straight as well. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny with these flat screen uh, CRTs, uh, it's it's like it was like they like they were trying to be like Sony was trying to be really futuristic, um, and so well not just Sony other companies made them as well but it's like they were it's like it was a step between this to this and so yeah it was it was like there are problems with it but I guess it was cool at the time you know <laughs> anyway uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, that looks pretty good. And then, oh, I think, was it, let's see, you can, is there something you can change on here? I don't know, let's see. thought that you could push a button. Oh, it did say a button. Hold on, what does it say? The D-pad can be used to move the grid around the video signal. Okay, that's kind of cool, so... Oh, okay. I see. I didn't know you could do that. So you can move the signal around. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, so there is a little bit of cropping going on here. Uh, but yeah, it's yeah not something to worry about. As long as you can see some of the red, I think you'll be good. Um, okay, now grid to uh, 24p. That's actually grayed out. I wonder if it's because we're in 480i mode. Um, Let's see, let's try changing that real quick. Let's see if it shows up here. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, it does. So, okay. Hmm, interesting. So I guess you can't do that on the in 480i mode. Yeah, okay. All right, anyway, um, that, that test isn't really uh, too critical. It, it basically just... Um, uh, yeah, this grid to 24p, it just, uh, it's it's basically the same test as before. It's just that it's the resolution for, like, the Super Nintendo, uh, what was it? I think it was the original PlayStation, Genesis, um, stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, we don't really worry about that too much. Linearity. All right, this is a cool test. And, yep, as expected, the digital flat screen has perfect circles. That's what we're testing here, just to look at the... Make sure everything is a perfect circle. Um, looks like this CRT also has perfect circles, so that's good. Yeah, on CRTs, you can actually go into the service menu and you can change this kind of stuff. Um, let's see, I'll show you what the help says on here. Yeah. Let's say, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can do the... Yeah, you can add more. You can add the grid and the dots and stuff. Yeah, it, it looks <laughs> perfect, obviously. Um, yep, oh, whoops, went too far. All right, let's, and then linearity to, or, uh, 224p, that's not going to work again, same reason as before. Um, gray ramp. All right, this is a cool test. So on this one, uh, I think you can actually also, uh, calibrate your contrast and your, um, brightness on this if you wanted to. Uh, but yeah, you shouldn't be able to, I actually, I think the other one's probably better because as the numbers are the top, yeah, you shouldn't be able to see, um, a bunch of details down here. 
otherwise the yeah the blacks will be um yeah you won't have very good black levels same as over here and then these are probably the two where you should be able to see a different you should be able to see a difference sorry you can see on here the brightness is too high so it probably needs to be lowered yeah you can see everything down there um yeah we'll look at the help here real quick and come look at it oh that's right i almost forgot yeah so um i'm glad i opened that up so on this on this screen i don't know how critical this is on a digital screen i know on these crts uh, this can sometimes be an issue i don't know maybe it i guess it could be because yeah i think you can still control the tint on these tvs um but yeah anyway basically sorry i'm gonna hit it myself uh you shouldn't see any blue or red bias on these basically it should just be red or sorry it should just be black and white <laughs> and gray you know no, nothing no no colors um if you do have colors and you might need to change the tint uh let's see i wonder if you can even change the tint on here oh you can all right let's just see what happens when we do that let's just see when we turn it down no yeah, still looks black and white <laughs> What happens when we turn it up? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this is more relevant for uh, um, CRTs. Not entirely sure, but yeah, I'm not really seeing any difference. I'm just gonna leave the tin at zero though. Uh, yeah. That's that. Let's go on to the next test. Oh, does A do anything? Sometimes there's there's stuff that are on these buttons. Okay. Oh, okay. Now this is okay. This is the test I was talking to you about before. So, so this test is good if you're gonna film a TV uh, because it does a completely white screen, and then you can adjust your white balance based on this. Um, yeah, and it, it does look pretty good right now. So I'm not gonna. I have it set to 64K. Um, but yeah, you can see like around everything looks a little orange. Like, let me turn the white balance back to auto. Yeah, you can see everything looks pretty. Now it looks normal. Um, but now this screen has a little, has a blue uh, tint. So, uh, so, yeah, then I ray if you raise the white balance, and it, yeah, there you go. And now it looks white again. Because I hope it looks white for you. <laughs> yeah, and then actually, I can actually raise it more. See, now it kind of has a reddish tint, so that's too much. Yeah, I think about 64K, at least for my camera, looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this test, um, you can actually switch between the, the different colors. Uh, so here's black, so I'm pushing R here. Um, black, and then here's red, green, blue, and back to white. Um, and then you can actually uh, adjust the individual um, values as well. So yeah, you can play around with that and get... I guess really any color you want if you know what the the um, specific values are and then A uh, resets it so yeah uh, yeah let's see here oh and then there's uh, also you can yeah Y will turn it all to zero um, so yeah anyway you can look at the help here you can see what it says on here if you want to Oh, it says X does something too. Oh, okay, X turns it all the way on. Yeah, cool. All right, all right. Now this one is, uh, I think this one you have, to, I think this is also for a, I think you, this is for a special tool. Um, it's. I think it's for, from what I remember from doing testing composite signals. Um, yeah, but anyway, it. so this is full blast white, and then when you push L, you can turn it down. It gets lower and lower. Yeah, so see, I can still see it in real life. I don't think it's coming up on the camera anymore. And then zero is just all the way turned off. Yeah, this test is also cool because, well, just thinking out loud, I could see it being cool. Let's, let me turn off the lights real quick. Okay, lights are off. Yeah, so I could see this one being cool because then you could, like, see if there's any since it's such a high contrast between white and black um you could see if there's any bleed from the backlight into this black and actually to tell you the truth yeah this this tv does a pretty good job i'd say at uh 
not bleeding over. Maybe it's because um, I think that I could be wrong on this, but I think on these LED TVs they have, like over here it could be a section for the backlight, and then over here it could be another section. So a lot of times in between the sections is where you can see bleeding. Could be wrong on that, but I, I think that's how it works from what I remember. Um, yeah. And then OLED is obviously different, and CRT is obviously different. But yeah, I don't see any bleeding around this thing, but there's actually another test for this too. Um, yeah. I'll just keep the lights off for a second here. Oh, sharpness. Ooh, okay. Well, yeah, let's do this one. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we could go back and do the, the other bleeding test, but yeah, we'll do that later. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so on this test, let me turn on the lights again. There we go. I swear I'm not afraid of the dark. <laughs> it's just that I think that, uh, sometimes these, uh, um, like the camera can pick up more detail, I think, when the lights are on. De I don't know, it depends. Maybe that's just, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, the lights are on now because we're not doing brightness and stuff. But anyway, on this test, um, yeah, we're just going to, uh, so we can adjust the sharpness levels, make sure that everything looks clear, but then also that uh, there's not artifacts where there's the high contrast areas. So basically, um, yeah, this is actually really important because if you raise the sharpness too much on really any TV, then you can actually see uh, artifacts. In fact, let's do it. I'll just show you. I, I'm just looking at it. Right now it looks pretty good, so I probably will just leave it at this default setting. Um, like everything looks crisp and there's no like artifacts, sharpness artifacts. But let's see. Let's, uh, come on. There we go. Yeah, let's just go in here and I'll show you what I'm talking about where when you raise the sharpness too much. All right, let's see here, sharpness. Yeah, see it's only at 25 right now. I think that's probably pretty good. Um, okay, so like, let's say like, oh, sharpness must be better, a sharper image, let's raise it all the way. And I'm saying that because I've been there before and I've done this before, <laughs> before I knew better. Okay, so this is sharpness at 100%. Okay, here's a great example right here. So this is supposed to just be black and then gray, but look, you can see like white. There's a white line on everything, and it's like it's it's like it's it's over sharpening everything. Um, yeah, and it's pretty noticeable. It, yeah, yep, and like over here, there's a black line next to the white line. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do is, yeah, so on here, oops, come on, there we go. Yeah, so you want to lower it until um, you don't really see those artifacts, but then stuff is still well-defined. So like getting down here to 34, 33, all right, yeah, I'm seeing those artifacts go away. I can still see them a little bit. Yeah, here's at 25, the original value. So, yeah, I'd say those artifacts are pretty much gone. If you get right next to the screen, I think you can see it a little bit. Now let's go to the other extreme and turn it all the way down. Yeah, so see, right now... Yeah, right now everything just looks a little fuzzy. It looks like a lower resolution signal. Um, yeah, everything just doesn't look quite as defined. So, yeah, I think 25 is probably the sweet spot yeah at least for this TV your TV might be different probably will be different unless it's the exact same model but yeah I think that looks pretty good yep don't see those artifacts along here yep yeah I think that looks pretty good and then turn that off oh and then I'll uh, show you the help menu on here since we've been doing that uh, yeah, so like it says on here, on most modern displays, the sharpness control, oh, is an edge enhancement control, probably should be set to zero. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so, uh, well, this TV has a sharpness setting, um, but I guess maybe your TV doesn't, maybe it just has edge enhancement. This, this, <laughs> kind of funny, this Trinitron actually does have an edge enhancement, uh, and I, yeah, and actually when I calibrated it, I actually set it to off, um, yeah, because 
yeah, it does, it can, I guess it can over sharpen stuff, um, which is interesting. I don't think this TV has an edge enhancement. Let me show you on the Trinitron just what it looks like. Uh, CRT, let's see here. There we go. Yeah. Yes, this is the calibrated settings. Oh, actually, I do have it on. Okay, yeah, so see, we can turn that off. Actually, I kind of like it on, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I should have done this on the other video, but yeah. It, yeah, it kind of, like, it just kind of makes everything a little clearer. I'll just leave it off, though, just because that's what it says. Uh, I thought I had turned that off before, I guess not. But yeah, anyway. Um, let me just look in these menus real quick. I don't know if this TV will have a... Uh, I don't think it does, but let me just look real quick for this uh, edge enhancement control. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure, but I think this might be what, uh, I think this might be an equivalent setting to the black detail. Uh, you can see out here it says improves detail in dark areas. Um, yeah, and I this is uh, turned off for the game mode. Um, yeah. yeah, I think this might be I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell, but yeah, I don't know. I can see maybe a little bit more when I turn that on, and maybe a little bit more. Uh, there's medium and then high. Maybe, yeah, there are a little bit more artifacts on there, and then when you turn it off, it goes away. So, yeah, that probably is the edge enhancement on this TV. Um, actually, look on here, there's some other interesting. So, here's that. Okay, now here's the active LED zones. So, this is what I was talking about before of how these panels are made, I'm pretty sure. It says dynamically improves the contrast ratio of the picture by locally adjusting backlight zones. Yeah, backlight zones, that's what they're called. Yeah, um, but yeah, this is turned off uh, for game mode because yeah, more processing, more lag. Um, yeah, clear action reduces the blur and screens with fast action and limits the range. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. I think I'll turn that off. I don't know. Well, I'll leave it on since that's the way it is. Oh, maybe I'll look into that more later. Yeah, I'm just kind of looking at these. Oh, now here's one. Okay, this one I think I will change the color temperature. I I think computer probably makes everything uh, kind of more on the blue. Well, there's cool blues. Yeah, I think I'll leave it on normal. Um, yeah. Normal, yeah, because that's what these other TVs are set to. Well, it doesn't say normal. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it on normal. I, I kind of like more um, uh, lively, more vivid. Well, not, what do you call it? Like, I don't like like the, the necessarily the really cool images. I like it where it's more, um, yeah. I don't know, more um, warm. Yeah, let's go back now. And now I'm just kind of curious, now that we've changed that, let's go back to our color bars real quick. Yeah, we can show what that looks like. On, which now that I've now that I've changed this, we might need to readjust the white balance too. Um, yeah, I think I will readjust it. Let's turn it down a little bit. Let's see. There's 60,000, 62. 64, that's where it was before, 60, 58, Let's see here. yeah, there's 56, 60, there's 6,000, uh, 62, uh, kind of like 60 yeah so I'm looking at my I'm looking through my camera actually 64 still doesn't look too bad there's 58 I'm just I'm looking through my camera viewfinder um, making sure that it looks the same as it does on the screen okay that's 55,000 let me play with this a second all right, I'm just going to leave it at 64,000 because it's kind of, yeah, kind of a little hard to tell which, which should be the best, but yeah. Anyway, let's go on to the next test. So, all right, 
boy, now I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, sharpness. Okay, yeah, so we did that. Um, now let's go to overscan. Oh yeah, this is a cool test. Okay, so this one will probably be, uh, uh, well yeah, it should be um, pretty exact on these digital TVs. Um, the CRTs are a little, well, this one, uh, if you saw in the previous video where I calibrated this TV, the, um, or a previous video, I should say, the, the, uh, the overscan was kind of all over the place. Uh, this one was pretty uniform though. It was like nine, eight, zero, zero. Um, but yeah, let's see what it is on this TV as we can show you the help on here if you're interested. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, it basically just shows how far away the overscan is. So like there's a white line drawn somewhere up here and then this shows how many pixels away that line line. So uh, white line is. So yeah, I'm uh, pushing the R button to increase the pixels. We're going to see, oh, there it is. See, there's that white bar I was telling you about. So now we're going to re reduce it till we don't see it. Okay, so it's about six pixels away from the top. Let's see how far away it is from the bottom. Probably be six. Yep. Yep, same as the top. All right. So six from the top. Then the left and right will probably be the same as each other. Yep, there's, uh, so yeah, it's right next to the left and then right next to the right. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, as expected. <laughs> yeah, for this uh, digital TV, it's uh, all, yeah, pretty uniform. The uh, top matches bottom, left matches right. So yeah, pretty cool. Good deal. Uh, let's go to, uh, okay, cool. So now we've done all the test patterns. That should be for, that should be pretty good for calibration stuff. Um, now let's do some cool digital tests on here. So, oh boy. <laughs> all right. So this is a great test that shows you the problem with, uh, with, uh, digital displays a lot of times. So this is the, um, the upscaler Maybe the upscaler, I don't know. What, whatever, yeah, I guess the upscaler that's built inside this TV. So basically, it's um, it's looking at this. This is the transparency effect. So on a CRT, um, what it does, you can actually see it on here. So it, it it flickers on and off for the shadow, and it causes a trans. Like it looks like it's transparent. It's really it's a really cool effect um, that a lot of older games do, uh, but. Um, two or a four K and just like digital TVs in general or scalers, they um, they don't they don't interpret this correctly and so it just shows it as lines. So it kind of still looks transparent, but yeah, I mean it doesn't look as good as it does on a CRT where it's like yeah. Uh, but anyway, and then I think on this test uh, you can change the background. Yeah, so here's on the Green Hill Zone. Oh, cool! You can fly around. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you can see on here. Like you can tell what they're going for for a shadow, but yeah, it does show those distinct black lines. Whereas over here, it's just uh, it's just flickering, and so yeah, it actually looks like a shadow. So, um, so yeah, that's that's an effect that unless you have a really good scaler, um, you probably will be missing on these digital TVs. Uh, yeah, here's against another background. Actually, doesn't look too bad on this one. Yeah. Yep. And then, yeah, here's another background. Uh, and then I think uh, one of these buttons will change. Let's see the X shadow on even frames. Oh, yeah. So it's just, yeah, just changing if it's on the even or odd uh, um, lines that are being drawn. Uh, okay, oh, and here's a different, here's a different, uh, so here's a star shadow. Yeah, again, it doesn't look very good on the 4K TV. It's fine, but yeah, it doesn't do quite the same effect as it does on a CRT. Um, let's see here. I guess we'll show you the help here if you're interested to look at it. Yeah, it says the, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. So, yeah, that's one downside to these TVs. Um, yeah, and then actually, I guess while we're, while we're looking at it, another, I don't know, this could be considered a downside or it could just be considered a difference. But 
you can see on here, um, like it's uh, the pixels are very crisp. Like you can uh, you can very distinctly see. Okay, there's a line here, goes down. You know, like every pixel is very like well defined on these TVs, the digital TVs. Whereas over here on the CRT, um, it looks more like a curved line, and that's kind of the was the intent of the original, you know, creators of games was. A lot of times they took advantage of uh, analog TVs to, you know, complete their vision. Um, and it actually looks really good on an analog TV, whereas I, it's not it's not that it looks bad on here. It's just that it's it's like it's too crisp. <laughs> it's 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 uh, too good. I, I don't know. It's just, it's just different I, there. I think a lot of people actually prefer the really crisp uh, pixels, you know, um, and in fact, even like modern games really lean into it, like modern games that are made in the retro, um, look like, uh, for example, Shovel Knight, that's a game I, uh, played and yeah, like it, it really leads, leans into this look where it has like very well-defined pixels. Um, but yeah, that's not, that's not the way we saw games back on back in the day on CRTs. Okay, lag test. Ooh, fun. Okay, I'm gonna have to grab a different camera to do this. And I think I'll do another video too, doing this a little bit more, because on the Dreamcast version of this test, you can actually use a microphone. Um, well, and there's it's actually a different test altogether on the Dreamcast. But yeah, basically what this test does, and it's good to have a CRT as a, because since these have zero lag, it's, um, you can actually see, uh, how much slag these have when you take a picture. So like, for example, the CRT may stop at seven, but then the digital TV will stop at three or something like that. And then that shows you how, yeah, how behind, how much behind it is. So, um, hold on one second. Let me grab a camera. Okay. So I grabbed the, the closest phone I, or camera I had to me, uh, which is the, this iPhone four, uh, I took a picture of the the screen here uh it's a it was a little hard to tell just because uh um yeah it's uh it's in black and white so you can't really see the color difference here on the crt but you can look at the time here so uh let me put this down here so it's easier yeah so uh so like so over here on the CRT it was at 50 whereas the digital screen was lagging behind at 40 frames so is that frames yeah so I guess I guess that's about a 10 frame lag um, which actually isn't too bad oh wait 10 frames oh that is pretty bad <laughs> yeah I'm not sure yeah that's pretty bad um, well, I don't know. Maybe it's typical of digital screens. Um, sorry, I was thinking of milliseconds. I wonder how many milliseconds 10 frames is. Let me look that up real quick. Okay, so I did some math, and I, th <laughs> I don't know. It seemed like a little bit too bad to be true. Um, but yeah, I think it comes out to, uh, 166 milliseconds of lag. I don't know. Let me sh let me show you the math I did, and you can tell me if I did this wrong. Um, so yeah. So basically, what I did is so so if there's sixty frames per second, so one divided by sixty, right? Okay. So that's so that's how long it takes to process. That's how long one frame. That's how many seconds one frame is, right? And then a millisecond is a thousand seconds. So I'm going to times this by a thousand. Okay, all right, so yeah, so 16 milliseconds is one frame, right? And then according to this picture, there was 10 frame lag, so now I'm going to times it by 10, right? And that's how I got the 166. Tell me if I'm doing my math wrong, but I think that this HDTV has a whopping 166 milliseconds of lag, uh, even in game mode which is pretty bad <laughs> usually you want to if you want to be down to like uh 20 seconds or 20 milliseconds um 
you know, maybe 24, but even like in your teens or even if you could get, I think my projector is supposedly rated at like six milliseconds, um, which is pretty incredible. I'm going to test that though, to be sure the manufacturers tell me the truth, but yeah, anyway, 166 milliseconds of lag on this TV is, um, yeah, it's, uh, that's going to be noticeable, especially if you're comparing it to a CRT. So yeah, let me know if I did my math wrong on that, but yeah, I if I did my math wrong, yeah, 166 milliseconds is quite a bit of lag. And yeah, that's just kind of part of these digital TVs, though. You have a crisp image, but you have a lot of lag, and you have some other problems, too. But yeah, anyway, on to the next test. Okay, so next uh, we have here our uh, manual lag test. Okay, so this one might not be as uh, accurate as the other one, but... This one you basically just want to, oh by the way, did I show the help on this one? I don't know if I did show that for you guys if you want to look at it. Yeah, but anyway, let's go to this one. So I'll show you the help on this one too. But basically you just want to push the A button uh, when the star gets into the, um, uh, when it's in the center there. So yeah, this is this one's kind of isn't as accurate of a test because, uh, um, it's really based off of your own reaction, but yeah, it's, I guess it's okay. So let's see what happens here. So, okay. So actually, I don't know, maybe I did that other test wrong. Let me know if I did it wrong because on here, I feel like I was being fairly accurate in Sion. I got about 43 milliseconds, which is a lot better than 166. Kind of thinking that other test, I I don't know, it did say 10 frames, so maybe I did my math my math wrong. But like you can see on here I was getting usually two. There were some there were some higher ones, but yeah, on an average of about 43. So I would say this TV probably has about 40 milliseconds of lag. Uh, and that's with game mode turned on. So it's not bad, but yeah, it's not the greatest either. Um, but yeah. Oh, here now it says a uh, MTS frames around 600. Yeah, so that's what, that's what my calculation before said. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. I'll do an, I'll probably do another video on the lag test stuff more of it anyway. Scroll test. Okay. This is a cool one. Um, yeah, so, uh, you can see on here, okay, so, now this is where we might want to actually go in and change that, uh, jittery setting, because on these digital TVs, since they're so precise, and my friend Leon, who I mentioned before, he, he, he noticed this on Mario 64, where, uh, when Lakitu is, uh, uh, doing a, like, where it's coming in on the, be at the beginning of the game. And it uh, scans across the castle. Um, it looked pretty jittery, and you can you can see that on here as well. So, like you can see that everything's just like it's like it's it's so precise that when it's when it goes across the screen, it's like it 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 jumps. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see it jumping a little bit? I can see it a lot more in person. Whereas on the CRT, it looks pretty smooth, like it. It just goes across and I think it's because these pixels I don't know it might it might depend on your TV too but uh, LED pixels generally um, they can turn on and off pretty fast uh, actually that's a good question I don't know if they I don't know if they can turn on and off faster than a CRT but uh, a CRT I, I think the CRTs yeah the CRTs would have to be slower because these take about I think like 20 milliseconds for like when the electron from the back, the electron gun shoots uh, the electrons at the glass. And then it takes about 20 milliseconds for that um, signal to go away. And so it basically, um, it basically makes it so when stuff scrolls across, it just looks smooth because yeah, it doesn't, it's not as jarring uh, as it is over here on the digital TV. So yeah. And let's see, yeah, the A button you can, I'll show you the help on here too. Um, but yeah, the A button, you can pause it. And I think you can, okay, there's going backwards. I think you can make it go faster too. Oh yeah, okay, the D-pad makes it go faster or slower. Um, 
Yeah, in fact, making it go slower, you can probably tell that there's, yeah, you can see the jumping. Like, look at these flowers. Yeah. And then, let's see here. On the Dreamcast, you could actually change the game that's playing. Like, it was, it, you could do a vertical test. Yeah, maybe you can't do that on the Wii version. Okay. Grid scroll test. This is kind of the same thing. Uh, geometry looks great, but yeah, it's, um, yeah kind of kind of jumpy a little bit uh, yeah I'll show you the help on here yeah you can change the direction stuff oh okay this is a cool test so this one shows all of the lines that would be um, drawn in a 240p signal uh, so yeah um, or 480i I guess for that matter um, but yeah just yeah, it just shows everything. And then, yeah, A switches between the odd and even lines for which ones are drawn. Uh, I'll show you the help on here. Yep. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, and then these are vertical lines, so R changes to vertical. Uh, and then, let's see, I think, I thought there was a way. Oh, yeah, here it shows you the frames that are being drawn, which is kind of cool. And then, yeah, that's the Y button. I thought there, maybe I'm thinking of a different test, but I thought there was a way to change how um, how many, like how big the lines were. It's probably the next test. Yeah, maybe it's this one. So here's a checkerboard. Yeah, kind of similar as before. And then, yeah, A just changes the odd and even lines. X actually occurs to do the same thing. Yeah, so this is pretty similar to the other test. You can see the help on here. Which is, and now it's checkerboard instead of lines. Okay, I really thought... Okay, maybe it's in a different test. Let me just look at this real quick. Could have sworn there was a way to... Okay, hold on, let me pause the video. Okay, I guess this was the test I was thinking of. I, I just thought it was in the same test. But yeah, you can see on here... Um, and actually... So if you look at this, let's see. Actually, I think there, I think there's more tests on the Dreamcast mode. I think that's what it is. But even on this one, so with the checkerboard test, you can see, like, with all these, uh, you know, black dots, you can actually see. See, do you see that line going across there? It's like there's some um, the the digital TVs having trouble taking in all this analog information. Whereas over here on the CRT. Um, yeah, you don't see any of those lines going across. Um, but yeah, just kind of interesting. It's a, I don't know if all digital TVs are like that. Probably not, but yeah, this, there probably are a lot that do that. Um, okay, let's see, did we do this one? Oh yeah, diagonal. Yeah, so this one's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I guess it's, uh, it's not that cool. <laughs> what am, I'm not going to lie to you. But yeah, this one just is diagonal lines, and yeah, nothing too much to see here digital TV they're gonna be perfect um, obviously actually on the CRT they look really good too yeah and then you can push A to, to make them spin yeah it looks pretty good uh, yeah you can also push the X button to, to manually change how much they um, yeah I guess uh, how fast they spin let's see I'll show you the help on here yeah, looks like L and R does something too. Oh, L and R is how you spin it uh, manually. So yeah. Oh, okay. Here's a cool one. All right, this is this will be interesting to test. So this one's, um, so on this, this is like what I was talking about before the backlight. Uh, yeah, it should you. Yeah, we shouldn't see any um, backlight bleeding in this high contrast area. So. Yeah, uh, I'm just looking at here. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really see it too much. It does look jittery though, jumpy like we saw the forward motion going across the screen. But something interesting. Let me turn off the lights real quick. Okay, lights are off. So yeah, interesting on this CRT. So this shows the twenty second mill millisecond, or sorry, twenty sec twenty millisecond uh, time where it takes for the 
the electrons to leave the glass on the CRT. You can see the the ghosting, which is uh, yeah looked over looked down upon by uh, modern standards. But yeah, I read it was twenty milliseconds. I haven't actually tested it, but yeah, you can see that ghosting. Whereas over here, um, yeah, it's a lot faster. Yeah, I th I think that they do test that to see how fast pixels can turn on and off. Yeah, that is something that you can look up and you know test different specs. Um, yeah, it looks like this TV has a pretty fast um, turning on and off. And I'm not really seeing any... Uh, and actually, the screen looks blacker than it does in real life. In real life, you can definitely tell the screen's on. But on here, it actually looks really black. It doesn't look that good in real life, I promise. Um, but yeah, let's... Uh, yeah, I'm not really seeing any... Uh, yeah, I'm not really seeing any bleeding. Maybe, I'd, maybe I'm just not looking for the right stuff. But yeah, it, I mean, it looks pretty well defined. It'd be good to compare it against an OLED, actually. Because, uh, yeah, those ones are very dis discreet. And over here, it looks good, too. So, yeah, turn back on the light. Okay, light's back on. I'll show you the help here. Yeah. I would say, I would say you can do some with LNR. Oh. Let's see. Oh, you can make it bigger. Oh, that actually would be really good. Okay, and then A turns it on and off. Okay. Yeah, so actually when it's bigger, I might be able to see more. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still not seeing any of those zones. Let's see what the... Yeah. Yeah, you can still see a little bit of ghosting. I think it's hard to see on when the lights are on. Yeah, let's go on to the next test. Okay, alternating. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so this one. Yeah, so you see as soon as that turned on, it just turned off. So it's there still is a signal, I promise. It's just that it's 240p. So yeah, it's not going to show up on this TV probably, but yeah, you can see it here. So let's uh, see. So this is a cool test. I'll show you the help. This might be kind of hard to read on here. No, yeah, you can read it. Um, yeah. So a lot of times there's delay when you're switching between 240p and 480i. Uh, so now when we switch to, like you can see on the CRT, um, it like the text moved down a little bit when it switched, but it's instantaneous. <laughs> like it's so fast, it's it's really hard to it's really hard to measure. But anyway, the so this test it shows you when it goes into 240p. And then when you push A, then it's uh, then it switches to 1080i, and then you're supposed to push A again when you see the 1080, or sorry, not 1080i, 480i image. Um, so yeah, so so this is for this is 240p. As you see, it doesn't show up on here. So now I'm going to push the A button, and then as soon as it as soon as I see the 480i uh, image on here, I'll push the A button again. And then we can see how long it took. So now it's 480i. Oh, sorry, I did. Okay, I have to push one more time. Now it's 480i. Okay. Oh, I didn't push J fast enough. Okay, let's do it again. Okay. Okay, here's 480i. All right. Okay, so it looks like it's, uh, yeah, so switch to 480i at 48 seconds and then view it at 50. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's about a two second delay. Yeah. I mean, over here it's you know instantaneous, but you know can't have everything, right? <laughs> okay, all right. Let's go to uh, sound test. Did I show you the help on this one? Sorry. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, that's right. Okay, sound test. So this one's cool if you have like a surround as well. I kind of wish I had the rear the rear channels as well, but yeah, you can hear on here. It just goes through the left and right. Um, and then center, I assume, just does both at the same time when you just have it plugged in your TV like I do. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a cool test if you're going to test your speakers or your surround system. Yep. Yeah. If you want to check your rear speakers, though, you'll have to do a different test somewhere else. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much everything for this uh, 240p test uh, suite. 
uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me a little bit here. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or if you notice I made any mistakes or anything, just let me know. And uh, yeah, make sure you, um, if you want, you can subscribe and uh, yeah, all that good stuff. <laughs> and then that way you can uh, stay tuned for the next video where I actually uh, I'm going to do some serious comparisons here um, with some actual gameplay footage. This is the, that will be the video I've been really working towards. I've been looking forward to do that one for a long time. I just wanted to calibrate this stuff first. So, yeah, thanks a lot for tuning in, and we'll uh, see you next time. Bye.